So when the, the Hindu and Buddhist philosophers speak of detachment from all this apparent world of separate beings, detachment means going with this whole thing and not resisting its change. And you can afford to go with it. You can afford to get mixed up in life and to fall in love and to get involved with all sorts of things. You can afford it if you know that it's an illusion. But this is not illusion in a bad sense of the word. Here's this Hindu word, crucial. The world is called maya. This word maya, yes, it means illusion. It means magic. It means art. It means delineation or measurement. And so from matra we get meter. And we also get matter, material. Isn't it funny that when we say material, today we mean something very real. Whereas the root of the word is illusion. <laughs> so you see, I mean measurement is kind of an illusion. You don't find inches lying around. <laughs> you can't pick up an inch. <laughs> so in, in the same way that hours and inches and pounds and uh, dollars and so on are actually imaginary. <coughs> there are uh, elaborate systems of cosmic bookkeeping with their little scratches on paper, little hairlines on dials. So in exactly that way, the distinction between things is maya, is imaginary. But what an imagination. In a way, to say that the world is maya is at the same time to say that what lies behind maya is immaterial. Look at the reversal of the word. Oh, it's immaterial. It doesn't matter. <laughs> what matters? It's all this. But that gets us to a deeper point yet. The, the self, the real self, doesn't matter. Which is another way of saying it doesn't exist for any purpose. It doesn't need to exist for any purpose. What purpose would it exist for? when it's what there is. It doesn't need, it won't find anything in the future. There's nothing in the past that it has to go back and remember. It's now, an eternal now. And so in that way, it doesn't matter. But therefore, the most important thing in the universe is the one thing that doesn't matter, the one thing that's totally and completely useless and that nobody can find anything for. Once a Zen master was asked, what is the most valuable thing in the world? And he answered, the head of a dead cat. Why? Because no one can put a price on it. So this self, the Brahman, is like the head of a dead cat. But you see, if then you say, hmm, I uh, really ought to get that dead cat's head because um, something spiritual about it and uh, it'd be very good for me. After all, if I, if I knew the self, I might be a better person. People might like me more. I'd be more constructive in society. I would uh, do this, that, and the other. But you see, that's putting the cart before the horse. That's trying to make the tail wag the dog. The knowledge of Brahman, the self, never does anybody any good if they're trying to make it do them some good. Only when... They are not concerned with whether it does them any good or not. Does it do them any good? It's like when you relax and you go out and play. Americans in particular don't know how to do this because they're always justified. They always say it's good for me. It's exercise. It's to change from work and that'll be able to make me work better. See? Everything they do is done for some serious reason. It's the Protestant conscience. And so we never play, except very exceptionally. 
because play is that which is done just for itself, for fun. So the self, the Atman, the Brahman, exists for fun. It has no reason to exist. It's completely useless. And uh, it is, therefore, Maya is linked with the word Leela. And that means play. Also, of course, the word illusion in English is derived from the Latin ludere, to play. So the nature, you might say, of the self is that it does no work. It only plays. Work is something serious, you know, that you do for a purpose because you believe that you've got to go on living. You work to survive because you think you have to survive. That was one of the things they told you as a little <coughs> child. You've got to go on, man. But you don't have to. <laughs> this thing doesn't have to go on. That's why it does. I know that sounds paradoxical, but uh, there's so many things in life that are like that. If I'm trying to impress people, I usually don't. If you try too hard with anything, you usually make a mess of it. And so this basic thing then is that the self, the Brahman behind the world, is engaged in play. This, it is in this sense that the Hindu philosophers say, Brahman does not actually become the world. The meaning of that is, he's playing at being it or it's playing at being it, as distinct from working at it. And so, in certain Oriental countries, when one refers to noble people of high birth, it is often said, uh, so, so, Lord, so-and-so has died. The, the Japanese would say, he has played at dying. Or will he play at taking a journey to Tokyo? Also, remember this, although I've constantly used in this talk the word one to apply to the self and central, the Hindus don't use this word except speaking poetically and loosely. The self is not one. The self is called non-dual. Because you see, the idea of one has an opposite. The opposite of one is many, or none. But the which than which there is no witcher has no opposite. There's nothing outside it. So you can't call it one. Because one is an exclusive idea. It excludes two. So they call it, instead of one, they call it non-dual, which is advaita. This is from the word, you see, deva is the root meaning two, the V becomes U, so we get dual, and A is the meaning in Sanskrit often non, non-dual, Advaita. And so it, it doesn't exclude anything. One is an exclusive word. Advaita is meant to be a totally inclusive kind of unity. Now, of course, this word itself, when you look at it from a logical standpoint, is a dualistic word, just like one. It's the opposite of dvaita, dvaita and advaita. But the idea here in Indian philosophy is to use this word in a certain way. Now, you know that on a flat surface, you can't draw three dimensions. Anything you draw will be in two dimensions. But why do we see three dimensions? Because of an artistic convention called one-pointed perspective, which will give you the illusion of a third dimension. Now, in other words, a two-dimensional line is being used to imply a third dimension which can never be expressed on a flat surface. So in exactly the same way, Advaita is a word used specially to designate 
what lies beyond all logical categories.